Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be interviewing Landon Stewart from ClientsAndCommunity.com. Landon is known as one of the group guys because he got his start by consulting with seven and eight figure brands, helping them build thriving communities around their programs and generating millions of dollars in additional revenue. Um, They've grown their own community and coaching programs in the past seven months. He and his partner, Chris, have taken their brand new Facebook group from zero to be $4 million a year run rate. That is absolutely incredible. And after building one of the most active and engaged Facebook groups in the coaching space, Their group growth and monetization methodology is now gaining attention from industry leaders. Just recently, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi's marketing team mentioned that Landon and Chris are revolutionizing the way coaches market online. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Seth, thank you so much for having me on. I'm super pumped to be here. Awesome. So let's go back in time a little bit. I know you weren't always a Facebook group guru. How did you get started? Yeah, man, I love it. So when I was 19, so I'm 29 now. When I was 19, I actually found the network marketing industry. So that's kind of how I got my start in kind of network marketing, internet marketing about a decade ago. So I've been in kind of the internet marketing game for about 10 years. And then how I discovered Facebook groups and really the power of them was back at the end of 2015. So at the end of 2015, I flew down to an event uh, that was hosted by a mentor of mine at the time. His name was Mark Hoverson. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2018 from cancer, but he was really kind of one of the founding fathers of kind of the internet marketing industry in a way. He came up with Russell Russell Brunson and Mike Dillard and some of those guys. And uh, I flew down to his event in 2015. And that's where I met my business partner today, Chris Stapleton. And I met Mark for the very first time. And we all kind of hit it off and we all decided to work together. So Stapes and I, or Chris and I, we started to work with Mark Hoverson on some of the projects that he was doing. And Mark was a big culture guy. He even consulted with some of the NFL youth programs on their culture and their community. And uh, back in 2016, he had a private client Facebook group. So it wasn't like a group that was designed to generate clients or anything like that, but it was a group that was designed to cultivate clients he'd already had. And he had like 2,000 and clients in there that he built over the span of his 10 years of marketing online. And he started teaching Steve's and I really how to cultivate that community. So he taught us how to write in a way that's compelling, how to be on video in a way that's compelling, really had to lead and cultivate community. And this was back in 2016, over the span of a year or two, we got really, really good at it. And then January of 2018, just around three years ago now, we got the idea where it was like, What if we took the principles that were working really, really well in this client Facebook group that was getting massive engagement? What if we took these principles and we brought it to an open public Facebook group that anybody could join and we could use that group as a way to, you know, not just cultivate clients, but also as a way to generate leads and a way to generate clients for our business. And we saw other people doing it, of course. So that was 2018, the first year or so of it. We really, you know, kind of like a lot of people who have Facebook groups, we didn't know what we were doing. It's like, okay, we got the group. How do we get people to join this group? Once they're in the group, how do we provide content in a way that's compelling, that builds a bond with folks? And then how do we, you know, convert folks from, you know, free group members wanting free content 
end up paying clients. And so the first year or so, you know, we didn't generate a lot of revenue. It was around the midway point of 2019 when we started looking at the group and the group actually started creating more revenue for our business than all the other marketing that we were doing outside of the group combined. And that's really when we decided to double down on it about a year and a half ago. And then in that time, we started a new group in January this year. In the past 10 or 11 months, we've taken that from zero to about $3 million in revenue. And uh, now we're really passionate about helping folks create their own groups like that. That is absolutely awesome. So let's break it yeah. down. How are you getting people? How are you teaching them? How are you? What did, I, I think some of the biggest concerns people would have when starting a Facebook group and trying to grow their business that way is number one, how do you get people to join the group? So how are you marketing these groups? Yeah, a hundred percent. So when we, when we first started our group, you know, at the time, everyone that there was, there was some other people that were kind of teaching groups and we, we picked up a couple courses on Facebook groups in 2018. And at the time, everyone who was teaching Facebook groups was like, you know, groups are a pure organic method. You can do this without spending any money on paid advertising. So the first year or so, per, probably first year and a half, we really bought into that. And so for the first little while, we were really just growing our group organically, where we were posting in other people's groups. We were hoping our group showed up in the search engine of Facebook, in the suggested on Facebook. So kind of just hoping people would stumble across our group and join our group. And it actually, at one point, started working pretty well. We got it up to about 20, 30 people a day joining for free organically. What we found, though, was a couple of problems with that strategy. For one, it was a ton of work. Like we were posting inside of other people's Facebook groups multiple times a week. So it was a ton of work. On top of that was a lot of people joining our group were not really qualified to work with us. They weren't really in our targeted market. So we were, we were, we were having a lot. We grew that group to be pretty big, our first group in 2018. Uh, but we weren't creating the revenue and the results from the group that we really wanted to create. And so coming into 2020, we're like, what if we started running ads into the Facebook group? What if we started supercharging the group with ads? So today... All of the group growth right now, we're growing our own group and the way that we teach our clients groups. So right now we're growing our group by about 100 to 150 people a day. And pretty much all of that growth actually comes from Facebook ads. So we're placing ads on Facebook and then we're directing them. And I can get into some of the, the strategy of it here in a second, but we end up getting people from the ads joining our Facebook group. And what we really liked about doing the paid ads is for one, it's scalable, you know, like as we've increased our ad spend over the past 10 months, we also get to increase the amount of people joining our group month over month. Uh, on top of it being scalable, we also have the ability, you know, to target people using Facebook's, you know, built in interest targeting. And then on top of that, also the words we use in the ads. So we've noticed is even though today, you know, our group, not only is it growing by 100 people a day, but it's also 100 people a day who are really in our target audience who are qualified to work with us. That is absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure there's tips and tricks and hacks and best practices mm -hmm. for running ads to drive people to a group as opposed to driving them off Facebook to a website or a funnel or to driving them to buy something. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see entrepreneurs making when trying to drive people to their groups? Yeah, a hundred percent. So, you know, the way that we do it, it's, it's really unique, you know? So what we, what we found out when we first started running ads to our Facebook group is that Facebook doesn't like you running ads directly into a Facebook group. And it's not because they don't want groups growing from advertising dollars. I'm sure that they like that, but they don't like you running traffic directly towards any Facebook link. Cause they don't like tying their brand to your brand, you know, because of copywriting infringement and things right. like that. And so we found a lot of our ads were getting disapproved when we started running. And in the beginning, we thought that was a big hurdle. It's like, how are we going to make this work? And then that ended up really being one of the bigger blessings for us. So what we ended up doing is now today, instead of driving the ad right into the Facebook group, we have simple ads that are like, you know, want to learn blank, join my free Facebook group where we'll help you with blank and really calling out who we can help, who we serve, what we help them with, tap here and join the group. 
And when they click that link, instead of it going right into the Facebook group, it takes people to a traditional landing page, like what most people would, would, you know, would be aware of online where it's asking for what we ask for is we ask for their name, email, and phone number. So it's basically like, Hey, join our group. Where would you like us to send you the invitation to join to? And we collect name, email, phone number. And then once they enter in that data, then we take them into the Facebook group. And so essentially what this does for us is on top of getting a new group member. So, you know, we're getting a hundred people or so a day to join our Facebook group, but on top of a new group member from the group growth, we're also generating around 200 email leads a day and around 200 phone number leads every day as well. So, I mean, at the time of recording this, uh, on top of we've grown our Facebook group from zero to about 20,000 people this year, on top of the 20,000 person Facebook group, we've also built an email list this year up to about 40,000. And we built a text message list this year up to about 30,000. So we're kind of, we call it our trifecta lead where we're getting someone, you know, their email address, their phone number, and we're getting them in the Facebook group. And we can kind of communicate with them on multiple platforms, which really ties into the content strategy um, that I'll touch on here in a little bit. Absolutely. So I was going to ask, mm -hmm. are you worried that you're Facebook dependent if everybody's a member of the group? But that's really smart to collect email addresses and phone numbers. So if Facebook shut you off or froze you or didn't like you for some reason, you had other ways to reach those people. Now you've got something else that's kind of counterintuitive. Why do you, why do you say that providing too much content in a group might hurt your chances? Like why, how could I go wrong over delivering? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So, you know, when it comes to the, the first pillar, when we work with our clients, there's, there's, we teach them three pillars of groups. The first is obviously being able to grow it. The second is the content you provide and the way you build the bond with the folks who join the group. And then the third is the conversion piece, right? So we can, once you get people joining the group, which again, we do that through ads. Once you've done that, then of course it's like, okay, how do I get these people to like me? Because as you start growing your group at scale, by 20, 30, 50 people a day, what happens is, is the majority of the people joining your group, they're not really gonna know you that well yet. And when they don't know you that well yet, they're, they might not be ready to purchase your product or your service or your coaching program, whatever it is. They might not be ready to purchase that yet. And so what we wanna do is we obviously wanna build a bond with those people, get them to like us, get them to trust us so that the transaction can be made later. And so we do that through content. The way that we do content in our group is very unique, very different. You know, a lot of the other, you know, teachers of groups, their philosophy and their strategy is really to blast your group with as much content as possible. So we see clients who start, who come to us and some of them, they're doing like two to three posts a day in their group. They're doing like a daily live stream inside of their Facebook group. And they're really just overwhelming their group with content. Now that strategy has a place and I'm sure it can be effective, but it's very different than what we do. Right now, inside of our group, we only post in our group right now about two to three times a week. So we're not posting in our group very often. What we do post though is different. So we call it our strategic content formula. Because what we found is there's a couple of problems with blasting your group with content. Uh, problem number one is for you as a business owner. Like we're looking at that and it's like, there's no way that I can run a business. I mean, at the time of us recording this, we've got a staff of 12 full-time plus some part. It's like, I don't know how I could run a business while also posting multiple times a day inside of my Facebook group. So there's a problem, number one, just being a business owner and then being responsible for that much content. The other piece, though, too, is even on the prospect end, on the group member end, you know, many of you who are selling, especially in the coaching course creation space, where you're really selling your expertise, if you're delivering too much of that on the front end, it actually loses some of the incentive to end up purchasing one of your products or one of your services, one of your programs on the back end, because they're like, I can't even consume all of the free content in the group. Why would I need to purchase the product? And I've got everything right here. And so the way that we do content is different. Instead of going really wide with content, what we do is we go really deep. So we do about two to three posts a week inside of our Facebook group. And what we do is we actually spend more time promoting the content we create than creating content. 
So I'll give an example of it. So inside of our group right now, we host a weekly live stream. We do it every single week. We've been hosting a weekly live stream every week, same time, same day for the past two years in a row now. So we host a live stream inside of our group every week. We use that live stream as a way to build rapport with folks. At the end of the live stream, we also have a call to action to work with us. So it's also a mini sales opportunity for us as well and a client generation opportunity for us. Uh, but what we do with that live stream, so a lot of people, they'll just like go live. Whereas what we do is, you know, the morning that we're going to go live inside of our group, we'll do a post in the group that's like, hey, today we're going live at 3 p.m. We're going to be talking about this, this, and this. Tap here and tune in. And then what we do, though, is we go to our email list and our text message list that we've been building up from the growth of our Facebook group, and we'll text and email that out. So we'll let everyone know, hey, we're going live inside of our group today to talk about this and this and this, you know, tune in today at three. And then when we go live, the same thing, we'll do an extra post 30 minutes before we go live. We'll send out an email and a text message a few minutes before we go live. And we really get the most out of all of our content. And we do the same thing with, you know, a value post. Instead of just dropping a value post in the group and that's it, We'll drop the value post in the group and then we'll go spend time promoting that value post and making sure everybody in the group sees it. So we'd rather create one really good piece of content that everybody sees than really overwhelm the group with a ton of content that not very many people see, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. Now you're doing that so that they are inspired, they get something, they feel they got value, but they you're leaving them hungry for more. How is that? How does that segue into your undercover method for getting free group members to hire you, which by itself is a great strategy, but you've got a way to do it in like 24 to 48 hours and joining the group. How are you pulling that off? Let's talk about it. So yeah, of course you have, you know, number three. So number one, you got to be able to get people to join the group. Number two is get them to like you through the content that you post. We do that using our strategic content formula and a few posts a week. And then number three, of course, is like, okay, how do I convert? How do I get clients? How do I get customers? How do I actually get sales and drive revenue from the Facebook group? So the way that we do it, again, it's super unique compared to how a lot of people are selling inside of Facebook groups. One of the things that we learned earlier on with our group is that, you know, Facebook groups are a part of the Facebook platform and the Facebook platform in and of itself is not a selling platform. It's not a shopping platform. People don't go on Facebook to go shopping. They go on Amazon to go shopping. You know what I mean? People go on Facebook and social media because they want to be entertained. They want to be educated. They want to see what their friends are doing. They want to be a part of the conversation. And so we learned early on, it's like, we can't sell in a Facebook group the same way that we would sell to an email list which really in a lot of ways, email over the past decade has really become a, a sales channel. We can't really sell on a social platform the same way we would sell on a sales platform. And so it's like, how are we going to drive revenue from the group? And so the way that we do it today is the main goal that we have when folks join our Facebook group is really just one thing, and that is to generate a conversation with us. So today we have a team of group specialists who's really, you know, sales personnel. And so today we have a team who can who does this for us. In the beginning, it was Saves and I doing all of this. So if you are listening to this and you have a team, you can deploy your team on this. If it's just you and your one-man show, you could totally do this on your own. Own. Saves and I did this on our own for the first couple of months before we before our revenue was high enough to start bringing on a team. Uh, but so what we do is our whole goal with the group is to get people to raise their hand saying, I want to have a conversation with you guys. And we do that in a few different ways. So the first is when people join the Facebook group. So uh, most of you who have groups, you're aware of this. Uh, but when someone joins your group, you're allowed to have approval questions. You're allowed to have up to three. So for us, we have a couple of approval questions. The third one is the one I'll focus on here. And so our third approval question when somebody joins the Facebook group is basically, we help so-and-so accomplish blank. Would you like us to reach out to you and explain how we do that? And right now we get about 50% of the people who join our Facebook group to say yes to that question. 
So when we're growing our group by a hundred people a day, we've got 50 hand raises, right? As people come into our Facebook group saying, Hey, I want to learn more about what you've got. Right. And so we're getting 50 conversations right there. And you could imagine what that'd be like for you, even at just five people a day joining your group or 10 people or 20 people a day, it can lead to a lot of opportunity inside of your business. And so we get conversations there at the end of our live streams. We say, Hey, who would like more details on how you could work with us and how we could help you implement some of these tactics. We'll get people raising their hands at, at the end of that commenting, Hey, reach out to me. And there's, so there's a myriad of different ways that we generate conversations from the Facebook group. Then from there, what we do, okay, so again, you know, a lot of people who are going to be joining your Facebook group, like they might not be ready the day, the second they join, they might not be in the buying state, in the buying window to purchase what you have because they just, they don't know you that well yet, that you've got to indoctrinate them a little bit first. And so what we do that I think is really, really smart, we call it our super introduction sequence, okay? And it basically works like this. So what a lot of folks do is they kind of just hope that people will join the group. They'll eventually, you know, maybe read one of their value posts. They'll eventually comment on a post expressing interest in their program. What we want to do as business owners is we really want to take control over the introduction sequence and introduce people into our world as fast as possible so that we can shorten that buying window and make the buying window happen sooner get people prepared to purchase faster. And so how we do that is anyone who says like, hey, I want someone to reach out to me. Uh, when we reach out to them, which we initially do simply through Facebook Messenger, and then if they're a good fit and things like that, we can move that to a phone call where the actual you know, purchase conversation can be had. But when we reach out, we're not reaching out saying, hey, here's our offer. Here's what we have. Are you ready to buy it? You know what I mean? Because we'd get a lot of no's. We'd get a lot of people being like, wait, I just wanted like details. So what we do is we reach out and have a simple conversation with them where essentially we find out what their core challenges they're facing right now is. Then what our team does is they pair them up with live streams that we've hosted inside of our Facebook group that touch on their exact challenges that they're facing. So they're like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, cha I'm my challenge is lead, lead generation. It's like, we've got to watch our paid ad training in the Facebook group. I'm going to go tag you in that. Can you watch that today? And so they'll tag them in a couple of videos, get people watching a couple of videos, then follow up the next day. And it's like, Hey, how'd you, how are you liking the content? And then by that time, they're like, this is amazing. This is the best I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What else do you guys have? And so our end goal is really for the group member or the prospect, however you want, you want to, you know, whatever term you want to use. Our goal is that they initiate the sales sequence with us where they're like, how can I get more of this? How can I work with you? Uh, but again, the big difference between us and a lot of people is we don't just hope they find our best content and express interest. We really take control of that process on our own. And we really manually plug them into videos and trainings and different pieces of information that can help them with where they're at. And then from there, we'll move them into a phone call into an enrollment type of sequence. That is absolutely awesome. I love how methodical it is, how systemized it is, how it's all built out in layers, one on top of another. For our folks who are listening to this and want to learn more about how they can make a Facebook group work for them, where is the best place for them to go to learn more about you and what you guys do? Hey, again, Seth, thank you so much for having us on. If you'd like to see what we do, for one, of course, you can join our Facebook group. You can just go to Facebook group or go to Facebook. You can type in clients and community. You can find our group. If you'd like to go through the whole process, we do have a special tracking link specifically for this podcast episode. So if you'd like to see the landing page we use and all that and go through that process, you can go to buildyourgroup.com slash shark. That's buildyourgroup.com slash shark. And that's simply a tracking link for us if you'd like to go through that process or just simply search for us on uh, Facebook. All right. This has been Seth Green with uh, Landon Stewart from Clients and Community. Go to buildyourgroup.com slash shark. Landon, thanks again for your time. I know it's incredibly valuable and that was action-packed and content-filled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks everybody for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 
727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free Perfect Pitch Sheet. sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.